good morning in the Americas, good afternoon in Europe, and good evening in Asia. What we're going to talk about today is something that has been a topic of discussion, topic for debate, in recent days come the announcement, the series of announcements related to 9.1.5. What is this debate? This debate is fucking hell, Blizzard. This is what we asked for a year ago, why is it coming now? Well, dude, you know, this is classic Blizzard style. They release a type of content that is clunky and time-gated, and then several months later, to retain their player base, they will try to make it a little bit faster for people to get what they used to grind for hours at the start of the expansion. This is, once again, something that Blizzard is doing time after time after time. We have complained about this over multiple expansions, and yet the same thing happens. This is kind of the debate that has been happening recently. And this is, of course, warranted. Warranted criticism. The general feeling is that 9.1.5 looks great, looks amazing. In my recent memory, one of the better 0.5 patches. Remember, this is supposed to be, you know, a minor patch between 0.1 and 0.2. It's supposed to be tiny and just have some minor quality of life changes, and yet this one is quite large, easily the largest intermediate patch that we have had uh, in WoW, which of course brings other questions. Maybe it's the biggest one we have had because the game had a ton of fucking problems that needed to be fixed. That's why it's so big. And even then, even with the knowledge that the patch is very big, that the patch is bringing a lot of good additions to the game, there is the feeling from many people, which is, I just can't quite be happy about this, because this is just fixing problems that the developers brought on their own. This is just delivering a product with a problem and months later selling the solution while also expecting to be praised. You know, it's gonna tick people off the wrong way, especially when this is not a one-off thing. This is not a oopsie. This is not a, guys, please understand us. There was COVID. We had trouble. This is something that happened for quite a few years at this point. So the frustration and the disappointment behind the release of the expansion related to certain systems, considered clunky, considered tedious, or simply being added with the wrong approach in the game, is what is not making this patch a complete success, a complete blowout because of all the good changes. Because you still have to look at where are these changes coming from and why were these changes needed in the first place. And this discussion then led to a different discussion. I was reading one of the tweets from Preach, good old Preach, who is not really making, as you might know from his announcement about a month ago, as soon as the lawsuit against Blizzard started, uh, Preach uh, followed up saying that he wouldn't have followed WoW because of it, but he is still playing the game. He is still, you know, a active player in the game. And, you know, he showed optimism in the future, for the future, purely based on this patch. The obvious question then was, how could you be positive? Why would you be positive if this is something Blizzard has done multiple times? His, his crazy idea, of course, was that he was just being optimistic. He was just basically hooked on hopium. So the following debate created from these series of announcements is, is Blizzard doing this as part of their malicious development cycle, or is this really them turning the page? Is this no longer just the same cycle they have done in BFA, the same cycle they have done in Legion? Is this actually the start of a different type of perspective towards adding different types of activities in the game, or this is just yet more of the same? The malicious development cycle that I mentioned refers to the examples I made at the start, which is the idea that at the start of an expansion, players are going to be excited, players will want to consume the content, so they will be somewhat willing to put up with annoying content, because, you know, the game is new, they want to, to, they want to power through it, they want to grind the content because they want to power their character. So the voices of displeasure, the voices of complaint, because the MO is terrible at the launch of Shadowlands, for example, are sort of muffled. You know, there are millions and millions of players, remember, Shadowlands launch was the highest number of subs ever in WoW, so it's not that noticeable. But then, you know, the first version of the game, 9.0, lasted for the longest of any release version of WoW. It lasted for like eight months. So 
yeah, sure, you can muffle, you can silence these complaints for a few weeks, perhaps the first couple of months of the game, but then, then people will start getting bored, people will start uh, getting used to the content, and the voices of complaint will start rising louder and louder. Blizzard will pretend not to listen, or will pretend that they are thinking about it, they are taking this into consideration, and a series of other well-weighted words to give you some hope. And then, eventually, later on, they will actually go and change it and make it more approachable. They were able to draw, they were able to milk and squeeze all of the possible playtime from the players before they started to get legitimately frustrated. So now it's time to allow them to do this content much more easily. We have seen with the mall, we have seen it with Cortia, changing from, for example, always being able to be mounted up in Cortia rather than being on foot like on the Mo, much, much faster anima gathering compared to the start of the expansion, so now you don't need to, basically you don't need to grind anima anymore, it's thrown at you for free from everything you do, much faster catch-ups when it comes to Renown, now you can earn much faster Renown, for example. This was the same style that Blizzard used in Legion and in BFA, just staying in the, in the more modern WoW, so every time this happens, people get annoyed, because it's something that happened before. I am complaining about Azerite armor being annoying, being locked behind grinding Azerite power to unlock the different rings of the Azerite armor, and then later on the rings get expanded, later on the rings no longer have a requirement of Azerite necklace level to unlock, and then there is a vendor being added to the game so you can select the Azerite armor pieces you want or earn them rather than just having to hope for the raid to give you one, all things that could have been done at the start. Instead, it took months for this to be implemented into the game. So because of this repeating cycle from Blizzard, it has brought on the question, could this be finally the time where this stops happening? The time where Blizzard has learned from their mistakes? I know, I know. The normal player will tell me and everyone that might believe this, why would you think that? If Blizzard has kept doing this for years, and this has been their MO every single time, release the content in the most obstructive, grindy, and tedious way possible at the start, because you know the hype is super high, which will allow you to, to still squeeze playing time with these systems, and then once the hype slows down, once the players start leaving, particularly because the content has gotten boring, and many of the things are you know, tedious and clunky to go through, you release, you remove all of these constraints, you make it much more easy to access to all of that stuff, so players will be more inclined to rejoin. So that then, once the players have rejoined, you can release 9.2, and 9.2 will go back to having restraints, will go back to having cock blocks, and to have time-gated content or activities. But it won't matter, because it will be the new patch. There will be new gear, maybe there will be a new dungeon, there will be a new raid, so people will still go through it, and then after a couple of months, maybe three months, people will have gotten bored again, so you go and you release all of those constraints again. Why would you think this will be any different? Why would this patch be any different than what we have seen, at least by now, for a few years, coming from Blizzard? So the other side, the side that wants to stay optimistic about this, like Mike, like Preach himself, could say, well, you know, the first thing that you might be optimistic about is that this patch is coming earlier, that this is not the typical time frame in which Blizzard is going to lift these issues according to the player base. Generally, as I said in the first announcement for 9.1.5, these are some of the changes you would have expected in 9.2, for example. So, four months or something from now, not as quick. Some of them might not even have come at all. So, that could be the first reason why it might make you think that this is a change of pace from Blizzard. And then there is the answer from the other side, which is, dude, have you seen the state, the absolute state that Blizzard is in right now? They have gone through a lawsuit, they have gone through a horde of complaint and criticism. Players by now have the idea that Bobby Kotick is some evil money-grabbing overlord, that the game is now trying to maximize monetization 
as best as possible that they are now trying to cater to whales and you can see it from their quarterly reports where they keep pointing out that WoW is making more and more money even though the players are dropping they don't seem to be bothered about that because as long as they keep earning more money where's the issue there is players leaving left and right you cannot go one thread about WoW without people talking about Final Fantasy the state of the game is horrible the climate around the game, the atmosphere around the game, the morale of the player base around the game is awful. Of course, they had to come out with this patch earlier than usual. It's just an emergency button that they didn't think they had to press. But because of all these things happening, they were forced to. You know, it doesn't mean anything in the long run. We will go back in 9.2 and they will continue with their old style, with their old tricks that they have been using for years by now. And then you have the optimist side that could point out that, sure, but we also had quite a few people leaving the company. And by leaving, I mean getting fired, more or less. We have different people at the helm of the company now. We have an additional type of scrutiny, certainly, being placed on top of Blizzard now. And you certainly cannot deny that even if these changes came early, uh, possibly because of this emergency situation from Blizzard, some of these changes are quite large, like, for example, allowing you to respect, freely respect between covenants, because at the end of the day, this was the driving point of the expansion. The entire crux of the expansion is that you were going to the afterlife and you had to Harry Potter sorting hat be sent to one of the covenants and be locked in there. You couldn't change. It was a definitive choice. It was, an, it was a role-playing choice that had a lot of effort and impact and story value and whatever other things Blizzard kept reinforcing from the beta throughout the first patch and the second patch. This is something they kept talking about. So the fact that this is removed in a mid-patch, in a quality of life patch, out of nowhere, whether or not it was an emergency button, it is still massive. Which is what brings this type of thought, this type of mentality to be optimistic towards the future. Certainly, they wouldn't have to do this. They wouldn't realize they had to remove this entire constraint that they wanted to have for the entire expansion and that they campaigned to have for the expansion removed mid-tier if they then didn't have some sort of introspective talks within the dev team about was this actually good? Did this actually make sense? Did we do the right thing? when we release this at the start of the expansion in that state, in this locked to one covenant only state. Even though the community kept bitching us about it, kept telling us it was wrong, kept telling us it wouldn't work, and yet we persevered, we continued with that system. At the end of the day, this is what is going to divide people about in the debate. Whether or not this could be the start of a different mindset from Blizzard when it comes to these type of decisions. So if the community tells you, this is fucking shit, then it needs to be looked at a little bit more seriously in the future. Or if this is just a ploy, if this is just an excuse, a seemingly great list of changes being brought into the game purely just by the state of the game, or even just by the atmosphere and the climate around the game, you know, the general feeling about the game, which brought Blizzard to pull this out, out of nowhere. Basically trying to calm the waters, basically trying to just make people chill for a bit. And then, you know, after they have chilled, they're going to go back to 9.2 with their usual methods. You know, they're going to release a new zone called Not Cortia, where you're going to have to farm Not Archivist Research for a few months, and there is going to be Not Shards of Domination that you, that you will have to grind. And then four months into the patch, they will release all of these restrictions. They will make the Not Archivist Research three times as fast to grind and the usual series additions of catch-ups and easier ways to deal with the content that they have done all the previous years. You know, the split between whether or not this is a one-off and it's not going to continue throughout the expansion, but more importantly, way more importantly, it's not going to be something that Blizzard will be looking at as a mentality, more importantly, in the next expansion, whether or not they have learned 
from this. This was the last and final straw. They have lost more and more players. The community around the game has gotten more and more toxic and abrasive towards certain decisions from Blizzard. Players seem to be less willing to put up with all of these systems that existed in BFA, that existed in Legion. And yet Blizzard somehow, some way, still managed to get away with that. The player numbers were still doing fine. So Blizzard could feel like they were, you know, they were right. They made the right choice because the numbers looked good. So were we really wrong? People kept complaining, but the numbers were cool. So where's the issue? Instead, this time, the numbers are not cool. So it might have brought Blizzard to look at this differently in the future. And then there is the opposite train of thought, which is, nope, this is just the exception, which will confirm the rule. This was an emergency break being pulled by Blizzard out of nowhere. And we will just resume the previously scheduled broadcast of Blizzard's style when it comes to content decisions for the future. Let me guys know what you think about this uh, debate, about these two trains of thought. Of course, given that currently the, the feeling around the game is quite negative, I'm not going to expect too many people to be hooked on Hopium and be, and be positive for the future. Nevertheless, still, let me know. Thank you guys for uh, watching the video. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, you can like, you can leave a comment down below, and eventually, if you roll six on a six-face dice, you can subscribe as well. See you guys soon, and in the meantime, at this point, there is really no other place to go than up. Just embrace the hopium and hope for a better future, otherwise it's grim.